What's up, party people? We are here at SIG Academy. We just finished shooting the first ever P365 EDC championship. It was a freaking great time. I had a blast. Jeff and I both shot it. And uh, give us some background on the event. Would love to. I, I couldn't agree more with you. It was a fantastic time. And I think uh, as I was first talking with the, the team here at SIG about the, the project and, and like, what I feel like they were aiming for, no pun intended, I was immediately enamored by it. Mm -hmm. Loved the idea. I thought it was exactly what this industry needs. And so let's talk, what is the EDC, or I think it's EDC P365 Championship. What is that? Well, it is a, it's a match. It was a, a day-long match. Some, some didn't last that long, but others did, that had 13 stages that were all based around concealed carry. This is the match that we made for you folks, all right? It's for people who carry every day. In specific, it's based around a platform, the SIG P365 and P365XL. And what I really appreciated about that was that those are extremely popular carry guns. Very popular, yeah. Very popular carry guns. And what that means to me is that people coming here were using weapon systems, weapons platforms that were no like legitimate carry guns, mm -hmm. right? And so that was not without its challenges. Yeah. The smaller subcompact pistols are easy to carry, easy to conceal, harder to shoot, yep. harder to keep running, mm -hmm. harder to keep them feeding. 11.3, thank you. Oh, I found Paul's score. <laughs> so, Love that right off the bat, and and I, I have um, I've talked to I've talked to several of the the staff and upper echelon, and they've received fantastic feedback again about what about meeting the expectations the, the mm -hmm. goals they they as far as I'm concerned they exceeded them because many people were accustomed to you know a certain type of and you know whatever's right, your bag right. whether it be IDPA USPCA, yeah because this is whatever. kind of a, a melding it right is. it's taking and it's, some USPSA some IDPA precisely. kind of mixing and it, and it up and it wasn't it wasn't that those aren't great activities mm -hmm. it was just that this was more more directed more customized right. towards the most the, the largest growing demographic right. within our industry which are the new gun owners mm -hmm. trying to encourage these new gun owners hey if you've got a firearm and you're carrying it, let's, let's pressure test mm -hmm. your equipment and your skills. Mm -hmm. And without, without a doubt, this event would have accomplished that. Uh, well, I, I need to eat what he's eating, does that make me faster? I eat bullets, actually this. Oh, oh. I eat bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna help though, Paul. Okay, okay, it does, it, it, you can. Bullets. Don't eat the oh, cardboard. Yeah. Okay. That's the trick. Everybody That's knows this. That's the secret, guys. I got this. I got this. I got yeah, this. Yeah. Just eat <laughs> yeah. And I was thrilled. I was. I loved our, our our squad. Was great. We had a lot of great people in there, and just talking with them and, mm -hmm. and kind of getting um, you know getting some feedback from them. I, I think everybody was very happy. You know, like while many of them would have chosen to shoot larger frames and oh, yeah. without concealment. When I asked each one of them, I was like, "Hey, are you know, are you are you carrying, uh, you know, a 365?" And every one of them was like, "Yeah." And you know, it's a uh, you know, I'm carrying a stock yeah. 365. Right. You know, yeah. so like yeah. that was the other thing is that they only had two divisions. Mm -hmm. They had the stock, and then they had the optic division, mm -hmm. and that was it. Yep, that was all there was, and I think that was great. It really, I think, was conducive to one one of the things that I was talking with Tom Taylor about was. Mm -hmm you know, many of these new gun owners may have some aversion or some hesitation because they will watch shooting sports and they'll they'll be somewhat reluctant to participate because number one, you're watching amazing athletes oh, yes. compete. Right. You're, and that's you're not seeing always, like exactly <laughs> the, that's the, not the, always the cream of the crop. Yeah. That's not always a, a, a an easy objective to meet. So my boss Paul was kind of criticizing your technique a little bit earlier and he let slip that he thinks he's every bit as good, maybe a little bit better than you are. Yeah. Do you think that that's accurate? Yeah, uh, you know, pretty much I go, uh, I go with the philosophy that everyone here is better than me. And, uh, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, do you have, is this calibrated for these guys? Cause I should probably be down here talking. Uh, you know, it's, it's all angles about that. But uh, yeah, you know, I doing the best I can. I'm old, I'm fat, I'm a product manager. I type for a living, you know, and 
Um, these guys are professionals. You know, they're professional operators, and uh, my back's starting to hurt, and they're professional shooters. And, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm doing the best an old fat dude can do, and, um, you know, we'll see what happens, you know. We'll see what happens. Uh, you know, if I can get through this match without pulling a disc or, or a rotator cuff or pulling a hammy, you know, it's, it's a win for me, really. It's a win. Hey, so Lena, I heard Paul saying that he is every bit, if not better than you are. Do you think that that's true? Usually men just work. Oh, I don't have to talk. Uh, we'll just wait to the end. <laughs> Word. That's why we shoot competitions. Even right? Just go away. They actually keep score, don't they? <laughs> they do. That they do. <laughs> You heard, folks. I'm better. Don't check the scores. But the other thing is the investment in equipment. Uh -huh. You know, uh, and that it adds up. It Even does. I, I shoot some USPSA production, and you know, like by the time I got a Shadow Two, the yeah. Double Alpha Belt, all the mag oh, yeah. holes, like it, you know, you're thousands of dollars in, and that's the the, the cheap division. Yeah. You and know, the beautiful thing was that this was a this was designed around your carrier like you mm -hmm. were supposed yeah. to just bring your carrier that meant your gun your holster your belt and yep. what you normally would conceal with yeah i you know? mean i brought my tier one holster and then i borrowed your neomag yeah, absolutely and that and was it i'm like for me I, there was a lot of what things you, doing, and, you know like, i like to do a are hot wash are you putting whenever, bullets in your gun you know, whenever i'm yeah. finished with Rushy. some sort of event Rushy i like bike. to kind of talk to people particularly the students or even the participants and kind of get a, get some feedback from mm -hmm. them, you know? And I like to try to keep it into like three different categories, if you will. Like, what did I do well that I want to continue to do, sustain? Mm -hmm. What did I do, not do well that I need to improve? And then what do I need to add based off my experience and observations that wasn't included in my training pro mm -hmm. training program. So, um, Paul, turning those turning those over to you, like. Okay. So I mean, thoughts? well, I thought what I did well was when I actually concentrated. I was able to place shots where I needed to, mm -hmm. like the 20, 40, 60 yard shot. So that that sh shots where you needed them. So in other words, not shooting hostages, right? <laughs> I only shot one hostage, okay. and I winged him, like flesh wound. Okay, I think pop I quiz. Goodbye, <laughs> 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 Harry. You. So. So like that was not a really good run for Paul, but we're not gonna tell him. We're gonna let him think it was. Do you need a hug? Yes, I do. I do. I do. Awful. Awful. It's okay, man. I found another one. I found another one. It's not yeah. quite as bad yeah. as she's on. Oh, okay. Nice. Nice. It's still bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very well. Continue, please. I'm pretty sure. You know, I I was. While I wasn't perfect, I'm pretty sure you had a procedural there, sir. So I had. You just, I, I'm pretty sure I had a procedural as well. And but I will say this: that my procedural was relative to how I would actually have done this in real life. I, I guess. Whereas you shooting a hostage in real life, probably not the same. I'm just saying. Whatever. <laughs> All right. What Again, do you <laughs> once winged them. I'll get over it. <laughs> what? What what area did you identify as an area that needs improvement? Um, oh, like, and you know what? Let me let me yeah. let me let me go let me go tick for tack here. Yeah. What did I like? What did I do well that I want to sustain? And I think the biggest takeaway for me was uh, you know my training plan and the effectiveness of my training plan, particularly during this COVID period where mm -hmm. the pandemic was at its worst and not being able to get to the range as a, on a regular basis with the normal amount of ammo that I would use to shoot, having to rely on dry yeah. fire practice. Mm -hmm. uh, dry I, fire I practice almost I believe you switched to a more, yeah, a lot more dry fire. You, had, you had a new regiment you were kind of working Absolutely. on. Absolutely. Yeah. So the uh, affirmation mm -hmm. that my the direction that I'm going with my pro dev and the training plan that I created is for all practical purposes spot on. Mm -hmm. You know, there are a few a few stages or parts of stages that, you know, I, I, I'm not questioning the realism because again, this is this is a match, but for me, do I wanna go down that road and invest training time in something that's, 
you know, a very small, minute possibility mm -hmm. of occurrence. So that was my my plus, my good thing. Uh, so what was the what was the the minus, the area that needs improvement? Oh man, a lack of consistency, especially when yes. I was trying to go fast. Yes. Our group, a lot, lot of fast shooters. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was a little outclassed in this group, mm. and uh, as the cadence kept continuing, continuing to increase as each shooter went up. There was definitely times where I, I didn't have a proper grip, but I was just like, I need to go bang, bang, bang. I need to go. <laughs> and, <laughs> go you know, it, it, it showed in, in my score. Um, it, it wasn't always ideal. I, I definitely need to work on that. Um, I actually haven't had that much time with the 365 XL. Like, honestly, the funny thing is, you know, when I do dry fire, which I have been lacking because we're typically putting out these videos and I usually just sit on a computer all day. Um, I typically practice with my shadow too, mm -hmm. you know, and it's a lot different. Heck, even the, 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 it was either the first or the second stage, I was like going two, 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 and they're like, you need to put three in it. And I was like, oh, whoops, dang, like. One more. Oh, shit. Yeah, I need to really improve. I need to practice with the equipment that I'm carrying every day instead of just the stuff that I take to a match. So I couldn't agree with you more on that one. That, that, was, that was very close to my kind of like area that mm -hmm. needs improvement. Um, like my goal coming in here was I want to shoot as accurately as I can as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I knew that, hey, I can, I can pull the trigger fast, but I'm not going to be accurate. Mm -hmm. So my biggest obstacle was in trying to maintain the accuracy standard when I felt that pressure to try to go faster and really where i saw that was not necessarily one or two target arrays but when you started to get into three or more target arrays mm -hmm. you want to just continue to just throttle down yeah and you know whether or not your grip was good whether or not your sights are good whether or not this that or the other i found myself doing two things during this um kind of event like i i kind of we we teach hard focus soft focus yeah in our training classes but we really focus mainly on the hard focus because that's where people really need a lot of work. Mm -hmm. Soft focus shooting, which is basically uh, more of a visual reference through your sights mm -hmm. and not a fixed, fixed, you know, like focal point on your sights, was something that I did a lot. Yeah, I did it a lot mm -hmm. in this in this event. And like the big takeaway as far as an area of weakness for me was I need to do more of that type of training especially at the A zone, maybe a little bit in the B zone. Mm -hmm. And to me, what I mean by that is the A zone, B zone, C, D zones are distances, what distances we train at. So A and B zones are gonna represent about 80% of the distance where you can find you can find yourself in the defensive gun use, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was the negative. What do you want to add to your training, to your equipment, to your uh, mindset? One, one of those Neo mags. Yeah. I need to get rid of that, uh, the, the magazine, or magazine carrier I've been using. It, it, showed <laughs> it's and it's also funny that you know that little device yeah. was as effective as it is i love those things i you know i happen to have two that i could loan you which it's is nice because i usually thing. yeah because i usually have like those are the those are my that's how i carry spare mags i'll yeah. carry one a spare mag in my front pocket a spare yeah. magazine in the back pocket mm -hmm. and and i got away with only having to carry one spare mag which meant i could loan that to you so that was that was very fortunate um, they are great, especially for concealed carry, because they move the magazine off your hip, which was your problem, mm -hmm. and move it into uh, inside of your pockets, yeah. whether they be the front pocket or the back pocket. Well, the, and the funny thing, though, is that you know we didn't use it that much, though, unfortunately. No. Because, Mainly you know, just to I, make ready. Yeah, yeah. You know that was that was my additional because I did have the the one on my on my holster on the tier one, but um, definitely that that's something I want to consider for my backup. Absolutely. Yep. Um, as far as what do I need to add to my training, I think probably the the biggest kind of like takeaway for me, as far as like where where I'm where where am I lacking mm -hmm. in my training? I feel like my training is fairly diversified, covers a lot of ground, appropriately, proportionately, and whatnot. But I think after kind of going through these events and recognizing that there was a great deal of thought put into the realism behind them. Mm -hmm. I really want to do more work from a realistic point of view. So like more work from, I need to add sitting. Mm -hmm. We did a lot of, we didn't we did, shoot from the yeah. seated position, but we sat on a lot of right. things. Mm -hmm. I need to do a lot more work at um, moving 
just a little bit to get either closer to cover or behind cover mm -hmm. instead of just standing, you know, just kind of like start to work and in, incorporate movement and not just movement laterally, but movement as a purpose to things, mm -hmm. you know, and, or away from things. Or away from things, yeah. yeah. And then there was there was one more which, um, which had to do with like one, one, one kind of like one area that I would like to add to my, to my training would be probably like we didn't start off on a good or bad note. It just was how we ended up in the rotation. Mm -hmm. But what I really want to try to add to my programming more is starting with distance. Start, I need to like my cold bore shots rather than going up and doing like um, one of our, one of our tri contest or a, a, a you know, LAV test. I want to start back at distance. I want to start to do that for like the next six months and just do something on a bullseye that puts me back at distance. Mm -hmm. I really feel like some of the things that I did here, the focus that I needed should have been higher and I couldn't tap into that focus because I was so much more, I was much more inclined to go soft focus gotcha. and kind of got lucky mm -hmm. in a couple of instances versus being able to switch to that high, that, you know, that hard focus. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if I add that to my programming, nice. might see something, might see something. What was your favorite stage? Mm. You know, I think my favorite stage was that that charger. The charger? Yeah, I uh, really do. Yeah, that one was really cool. I, you know, and I, I don't want to give too much away. I doubt they'll use the same thing again or change it up a little bit, but. Oh, no, we'll, we'll be playing it. Oh, really? We'll, okay, never mind, never mind. It'll be B-roll here. So yeah. th this was also one area where Jeff could make a slight improvement because I was the first shooter yeah. on that stage, oh, yeah. which I really loved because, you know, no, no chance to watch anybody go. Yeah. Uh, you know, cold in a sense, like it was maybe like our fourth stage. Yep. So while I had done a few, I was shooting it cold and uh, listened to the range or the, the stage brief, knew what I had to do, even demoed it yeah. to the squad, <laughs> how to knock down that pepper popper with your strong hand. And what's so funny is as soon as that timer went, I went immediately to my draw right. stroke. I had to like <laughs> shift, knock the plate down, start the charger, and yeah. then finish the yeah. draw. So I like that because it like it kind of like shocked my system a little bit and yeah. I was playing from a from a negative at that point right. because right. I kind of screwed up. Even yeah. though I didn't get any penalty points or anything, I was it added maybe a second to my overall time because of the reshift. But mentally it was great because I had to fight through that little hiccup and still shoot well. And I think it, there was only one, I, I pulled one shot away from the hostage, which is another thing that mm -hmm. I learned, which yeah. is, I'm, I'm, oh, that's what it was. I'm favoring the, uh, the open space between the hostage. So I need to kind of trust my, trust my, my skill and deliver those shots right in the A zone gotcha. versus favoring away from those things. Gotcha. So that was, that was my favorite. What about yeah. yours? That one was really good. Actually, I was thinking about that as well, but I, I think the meth head. The, the, the meth. <laughs> you guys will see what I'm talking about. And in that stage, yes, I was the first one shooting. Mm. So I showed up, and and you're like, wait, what now? Yeah, that thing <laughs> also was happened to be where I winged, you know, the the, the bystander. But they had a crazy meth head behind them, and I put like five shots in them. So you know, like. That was a lot of stabby craziness going on. Like <laughs> that was, I was like, I, I was I was talking with Ian, and uh, you know one of the things that we were like, you know, everybody is hitting low. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go high. Yeah. Let me put in the sight up by the by the by where the head was and just go for broke. See yeah. what happens. But that was, I'll tell you what, and especially having to come back from lunch. Yeah. We no, took our yeah. lunch break. That was lunch break. And, and then we came back and we did that freaking like that crazy oh man that thing was hilarious so they had that was another thing that they did really well was they brought in some novelty as mm -hmm. far as some the uh, brand new system yeah hadn't been seen yeah. yet hasn't been used yet i'm um, i'm imagining it's going to be very popular in the sh uh, in all the other shooting uh -huh. sports because it's just crazy yeah like at that one i felt kind of good because i knew that a lot of the other better shooters we're gonna have just as it was a it was the yeah it was, a crap it was shoot. just it was, yes it was exactly. really a crapshoot how yeah. well you would do yeah because the guys that did well were not the guys that I was expecting right. to do well yeah and so some of those misses were costly and kind of leveled the playing field a sense it, it did and because I was they're like pretty happy about right that. 
because that pot, I mean, you just really don't know what to do, right? Mm. Like, everyone who's shot a lot of practical shooting sports, you know, whichever, <laughs> they know what to expect, you know? But, like, <laughs> that thing was all over the place. So, yeah, like, a it lot was, of shooters had, had, you know, maybe I think that's issues, gonna, but, it, yeah, it definitely, everyone had to take their time and, yeah. and put a couple extra rounds down range to try to make sure. Because it was really hard to, like, mentally verify and call your shot, did I hit it? You know, it was, it was moving fast. I'm going to be honest. I just was, yeah. I just continue to shoot. Thinking yep. Maybe if I shoot six or seven, I'll get two or three hits. Yep. Yep. <laughs> that was how I was going. I wasn't yeah. even trying to call oh, the yeah. shots at that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Gotta, so Got to watch out for that super meth. Oh, man. So true. Uh, you know, those are just some examples of the, um, like, the artistic value mm. in these stages. And, and that was the other part. Like, literally, the stages were not just, like, kind of half-ass facades. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. They, they were, were legit. Yeah, the, the gas... The gas pump, the gas station. <laughs> that was like you know? perfect. And yeah. like what's funny too is it really helped to put you in like to put more realistic context. Mm -hmm. You know, you're literally standing at a gas pump, the ATM machine, mm -hmm. you know, the um, the benches by the park. Mm -hmm. You know, those were all those were all real. Yeah. You know, and we all we all in some way, shape or form have or come into contact with them in our daily lives. Mm -hmm. And so I, I really dug that. That was really kind of like yeah. a, a great it, thing. It was, it, was, it was a blast. Hopefully they, year two, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do much better. <laughs> Maybe. We'll, we'll say that. I was going to dry fire so much prior to this event. Me too. And then work got in the way and life and travel and it, it was so just funny. went right out the window. It was so funny because all the way up, it, I would say, but the month leading up to this, 30 days leading up mm -hmm. to this were absolute chaos. And prior to that, when I was... 30 days out, mm -hmm. my dry fire programming, my trips to the range, they were all good, mm -hmm. consistent. I liked them, but the 30 days before this time period, it all went to shit. Oh, I found Paul's score. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, pff, hell in a handbasket. That's the best way to put it. And it's amazing. I, I have not only, so I have the Mantis X and the Cool Fire training system at home uh -huh. on the CZ uh -huh. in just in the uh -huh. safe that and you don't like, ever use. well I mean I've had them for about a month to do videos because oh. the plan is to do a video on it so check back for that soon you'll see how terrible I am <laughs> and um, yeah it's there but just just not enough time and it, it I, well really I you can make 15 minutes I didn't make it happen I it, found that it's one of those things I need to make it a priority in the morning. But it's a good it's a it's yeah. a good habit to get into, but mm -hmm. it's not an easy habit. It isn't. Into. It's no, it's very easy it. to to let it slide and and it is not. The, unfortunately, you get here sometimes and it shows on certain stages. The the oh, that was another thing for me. Weak hand, strong hand. Oh, yeah. I don't train that often. I no. really don't. You know, um, it, it. I need to do a lot more of that. I don't. I don't do enough weak hand. Mm -hmm. You know, again, that's the realism. I, I don't know if I would change my training program to add more weekend mm -hmm. because I don't think it's as likely. Mm -hmm. It like so. What I'm saying is that is it po It's possible, just not probable. Yeah. And so because of that, I would not probably invest as much training time into. It. I want to do more, mm -hmm. but I'm not gonna like go crazy. Right. And spend all my time on it. Um, yeah, so that was another, that was a good one. The strong mm -hmm. hand only I did well, but the weak hand only. Not good at yep, all. Yep, yep. Well, anything to uh, no, I finish just, this up? I want to thank the folks at SIG uh, for putting this on. They, they did a bang up job. Uh, we got a little bit of insight into next year. Oh. Yeah, I'm not going to reveal it though. <laughs> it'll be cool though uh if if it all comes to fruition i think it's gonna be pretty awesome i think people are really gonna dig it um you know the one the one bad if i had to identify something mm -hmm. as a as a negative it is that the field is limited to just the p365 and 365 xl i'm not necessarily complaining about that mm -hmm. i'm a big fan of those platforms mm -hmm. But it does mean that other folks outside of the of those family firearms yeah. are kind of SOL. Right. But well, maybe it'll morph into something where it's that's, you know uh, subcompact. It would be weird because the XL's kind of in between a compact and a subcompact. True. But I don't know. Um, yeah. Hopefully, so it, it, I, it's I'd a, like to see it evolve. If I had to, if I, you know, if, if I had to look at it from a uh, thousand foot view mm -hmm. and look at it from a community 
wide mm -hmm. aspect, that would be the only, the only critique that I could possibly come up with. Yep. It really is. Everything else was fantastic. We had a, you know, we had a great time. I did. So, awesome. thanks for coming out, Paul. Appreciate it. It was good to have somebody that I could shoot better of. And uh, I like two or three stages. I I beat him. So that was that was better than Jeff, wasn't it? It was. That was also, who do I learn from? <laughs> But I think that one, when I had to go and reshoot, got st stricken off of your, well, stricken off. You had, you, had to, you had to reshoot. Well, that's because it was a technical error. It wasn't uh, my problem. Uh -huh. wasn't uh -huh. my problem. I'm just saying, pretty sure that one went bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was fantastic. Thanks, Paul, for coming out. Yep. And the, the rest of the family for enjoying the time out here. So, so I don't know if you knew. Mm. But when you ran, yeah. we were back here helping you. Oh, yeah. and, then, and then when you were actually done, we yeah. started clapping so you could go oh, to stop okay. shooting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to wrap this up. And while I love you not quite as much as Andrew, if you want to show Andrew how much you love him more than me, go down into the doobly-doo, hit that Linktree link we have going on there, and sign up for our newsletter. You're gonna get all the latest newsletter sends, find out what's going on on the ARFCOM forums, and the latest deals. Jeff, you have anything else to add? No. No. Catch you later, <laughs> Bill and Ted. <laughs> Boom. <laughs>